Warriors. I'm your host, the C-Dot that knows a lot, Dr. Waluigi. Last year hit many fans of different series pretty hard when it came to our favorite actors' deaths. From the Harry Potter fans with Robbie Coltrane to the Power Rangers fans with Jason David Frank, many of our beloved heroes have left us too early. And it also hit me hard, too, with the passing of one of the greatest voice actors of all time, Kevin Conroy. To many fans, Kevin was the first person you thought of when it came to the voice of Batman. Voicing Batman in many TV series, movies, and video games, Kevin Conroy is a man that will be missed by his loved ones and the many fans who respect and were inspired by him. So as my own personal tribute to him, I'll be counting down my top 20 favorite Batman the Animated Series episodes, in honor of the legacy Kevin left behind. Mad as a Hatter One of the lesser-known villains, Jervis Tetch, aka the Mad Hatter, is a character that hasn't had much growth in the comics or other media until very recently. However, my favorite iteration of the character was the one from this series, as the actor they chose made him stand out as a sad but likable villain. He starts out as a man who's quiet and stays in the dark, but once he becomes the Mad Hatter, he gains the confidence to go after the woman he loves and almost gets her. It's just sad that when he does become a villain, it's because of poor circumstances that were outside his control. I think that Roddy McDowell was a great choice to play Jervis, and this episode was able to show the range and creepiness that the character hasn't had in a very long time. I can see why many people not like the character in other mediums, but this is the one time where the character became a great and interesting villain. Number 19. Paging the Crime Doctor One of the best episodes that relates to Bruce's past that I'm surprised doesn't get more attention. The episode follows Batman as he searches for his friend, Dr. Leslie Tompkins, who was kidnapped by the crime boss Rupert Thorne and his brother Max Thorne. Known as the crime doctor as he lost his medical license, must now perform a delicate operation to save his brother's life. This episode is in one of many that deals with the relationship between Bruce and his father's colleagues. Not only do we get to see Dr. Tompkins again, but we get to see Max Thorne and how his life went downhill after med school, but still retains the wonderful memories he had with Leslie and Bruce's father. And while I love this episode for the great fights and the detective work by Batman, the main reason I love this episode is for the ending, as it has a heart-wrenching moment that makes you tear up every time you watch it. Number 18, The Demon's Quest, Parts 1 and 2. In my opinion, Batman's greatest adversary has always been Ra's al Ghul. Not only is he a character of sophistication and horrifying presence, but he is the living embodiment of an evil Batman. He has all of the wealth that Bruce Wayne has, and he uses his connections as the leader of the League of Assassins to create the same fear that Batman has built up in Gotham. These two episodes show off the great connection that Batman and Raish have in both respect and planning as they both tried to save a loved one that was taken from them from part one. Leading to part two as Batman must now confront and take down the cruel tyrant before he destroys the world. Much like how Roddy was the best choice to play the Mad Hatter, David Warner was the best choice to play Ra's al Ghul, as he gives the sophistication and patience that Ra's has in the comics. Every time you saw Batman and Ra's on screen, it felt like watching an intense chess match between two masters of chess, leading up to an intense conflict of sword skills that rivals many other great sword duels, one of the many great episodes that shows off the demon's head. Number 17. Read My Lips. Another episode that features another underrated villain, the episode follows Batman as he takes on the odd but threatening mob boss of Arnold Wesker and his dummy Scarface. What makes this episode stand out to me is, once again, the great casting. George Zundaza, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, is an actor who had a few minor roles that I recognize, but is famous for playing a great version of the ventriloquist in Scarface. He does a wonderful job with the role, which is something I find very hard to do with one actor doing two different voices, especially when you're better at doing one over the other. But George was able to give life to a very underutilized Batman villain making Scarface scary and Arnold the timid and mousy lackey that we know from the comics. Number 16. Showdown. 
An episode that, while it has very little to do with Batman, I find stands out as this was one of the episodes that got to expand on the DC Universe before Warner Brothers kept mucking it up. Batman and Robin are chasing after Ra's al Ghul as he recounts a story of how he fought Jonah Hex while trying to take over the Wild West. Like I said, while the episode doesn't focus on Batman, it's still a fun episode with a great villain fighting against a pretty great but underappreciated DC hero. Bill McKinney plays a very old and tired Jonah Hex, but the writers were able to make him the same sarcastic and fun hero that the film wasn't able to capture. But what I remember about this episode is once again the ending with the interactions between Batman and Raish and what he's been doing throughout the episode. I wish there were more episodes of these two as they made everything great in terms of the cast and writing. Number 15. Second Chance. If there's one villain that I feel is never portrayed right in other mediums, it's Harvey Dent, aka Two-Face. Oftentimes I find that whenever I see Two-Face in other media, they always show his villainous side and never the good. But in this series, they gave Two-Face the balance he's known for, and it shows in this episode. Bruce is paying for an operation to have Harvey's scarred face healed, and possibly ending the evil of Big Bad Harve. However, Harvey gets kidnapped, and it's up to Batman and Robin to figure out who kidnapped him. This episode has a great mystery, with Batman and Robin trying hard to figure out who kidnapped Harvey, and when they do figure out who kidnapped him, it leads to a great fight scene, and a heartfelt ending between Harvey and Bruce. It's episodes like these that made the show stand out with Batman being more of a guy who helps people out with his money rather than punching his problems away. Number 14. Never Fear. This episode came out during the fourth season of the series, where the animators redesigned the characters to fit the new Superman animated series. It had a rocky start, but eventually the season did pick up in terms of writing, and it shows in this episode. In this episode, we see the Scarecrow, voiced by Jeffrey Combs, create a new toxin that removes a person's fear and has the residents of Gotham do crazy things. Now Batman has been affected by the toxin, and it's up to Robin to stop Batman and foil the Scarecrow's plot. This episode isn't one of the most standout Scarecrow episodes of the series. I'd say Dreams in Darkness has the better writing, but what does make the episode stand out is the performance by Jeffrey Combs. He makes this version of the character creepy from the design and his voice having him look like an undead hangman with a ghostly low-toned voice, making this one of the better iterations of the Scarecrow. If there's any reason to check out the fourth season, it's because of this version of the Scarecrow. Number 13. Beware the Creeper. This was the episode that made me a fan of the series. A news reporter named Jack Ryder, voiced by Jeff Bennett, covers the one-year anniversary of the creation of the Joker. Little does he realize that the Joker is watching above and decides to throw him into the same chemicals that created him, creating one of my favorite underrated DC characters, the Creeper. This episode has some of the funniest writing that involves the Joker, his goons, and the star role of the Creeper. The Creeper reminds me of the 90s superhero freakazoid with his cartoony antics, from how he survives getting a statue dropped on him to his almost fourth wall breaking moments. The Creeper makes for an entertaining character that brings the episode to a comedic life. It's sad that we never get the chance to see more of him outside of cameos or mentions in other Batman series, but this episode does fill that void whenever I watch. The Forgotten. Probably one of the saddest episodes of the series and shows the unfortunate reality of Bruce Wayne. Batman discovers that several of Gotham's homeless people are being kidnapped by a mysterious chain gang. While he tries to find out who they are, he's knocked out, loses his memory, and is taken to a mine where the rest of the homeless Gothamites have been taken. What I like most about this episode is showing the life of Bruce Wayne and how he wishes he could do so much more for Gotham and its people. I know people like to make fun of Batman for using his money to make silly gadgets and inventions for his crime fighting, but this episode does show that he does donate to good causes, but sometimes money can't solve everything and that the reality of things are a lot more serious than we make them out to be. Number 11, Baby Doll. Another great episode featuring an underrated villain. The cast of an old TV show are being kidnapped by the diva of the series, Mary Doll, aka Baby Doll. 
It's up to Batman and Robin to find the cast and stop the evil intentions of Baby Doll. Everyone in their grandmother has talked about how well written this episode is, and how the ending is one of the saddest of the show. The only thing I can add to what I like about the episode is the cast. Not just Baby Doll, who's a great villain, but the other actors as well. The cast of... the cast, are all played by other famous voice actors like Jason Marsden and Alan Young, who are famous actors from my childhood that need more attention for all the work they've done in the past. Not much else I can say that other reviewers have said, so go check out the episode.